there are important models from military spending, particularly during the Cold War, in microchips and other information technologies that we think are very, very good models for this. Um, so if you go back and look at the microchip revolution, the federal government literally guarantees the market for microchips um, for about 10 years in the late 50s and early 60s. Literally says, we will buy every microchip that meets some minimum specification that you can manufacture. The role, result of that was that the manufacturing of microchips scaled up dramatically. That's when we start to see Moore's Law come into effect. That's where we start seeing these extraordinary learning curves in manufacturing that start to sort of drive down dramatically the cost. The cost of a microchip comes down from about $1,000 a chip for a big, slow chip in the late 1950s to less than $20 a chip for a much smaller, much faster chip in the mid-1960s. And of course, we've sort of seen that trajectory continue yeah. ever since. And if you talk to folks uh, in the sort of uh, uh, you know, microcomputing world and in the supercomputing world, they'll tell you this is still happening, that it is still military applications where the federal government is procuring these technologies that are really just on the bleeding edge technologically in terms of their performance. Um, we need to create the same kind of dynamic um, in terms of the public role for technology deployment uh, when it comes to energy. And we don't necessarily have to do that through the Pentagon, although certainly there's lots of applications where uh, it might make sense for the Pentagon to do some of this. But we have other examples even in energy where, for instance, things like the Bonneville Power Authority uh, and the Tennessee Valley Authority played a critical role in uh, 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 the uh, ele rural electrification, uh, the massive expansion of hydropower. And what they did is they basically uh, uh, sort of built the dams, um, uh, guaranteed a market for that energy, and then a wholesale market and then sold it back um, uh, to utilities and other electricity uh, users after they purchased it. Um, well, we could do the same thing with solar, wind, where we're really literally just directly you know, creating power authorities or other kind of mechanisms to directly procure these technologies. But I think what we think the critical thing that we need to do is that we need to do it in a way that the way that we procure is constantly pushing the private sector, the entrepreneurs, the folks who are kind of creating these technologies and trying to deploy them to constantly drive down the price. And so the incentive here, and when, when technologies stop moving down that cost curve, we need to stop funding them until they can get back on some kind of learning curve in terms of those prices come down just, c coming down just like microchips did.